Paradise Killer. Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, Playbot Magazine's AI Platform of the Year, and it is time for episode 24 of my Let's Play of Paradise Killer. So, without further ado, we're going to pick up exactly where we left off, and uh, shamelessly invade Paul Witness's privacy. I'm sure we'll learn a great many secretive things about him. As you can see, he's keeping an eye on us through this narrow nook between two parts of the architecture, but um, we have nothing to be afraid of, we have nothing to be ashamed of, we have every right to invade his privacy. Investigation. And looks like we've got tons to find. Crying Grudge. A statue of the Prophet Crying Grudge. The god endlessly weeps at the visions of the future he cannot unsee. Plants Collection. Witness collects and breeds rare plants. Sometimes he gives them as gifts and then hounds you to take proper care of the most fragile plants on the planet. I, I find myself wondering to what extent are these editorializations... Like, is this the voice of Lady Love Dies' own thoughts? Is that what she's reacting to things? Or is that Starlight itself editorialising? It'd be really interesting if it turned out eventually that Starlight was actually a character and had been talking to us through examinations of random artefacts we find and bits of evidence the entire time. Witness to the End's phone. Witness's phone. I can take this to a comms tower and verify its location. The Silent Goat, the Holy Catalyst. Relics. Relics from Persia before the Great Betrayal. These are early depictions of gods and demons. So that's actually... Like, those actually are his, uh, scanned photos of historical artifacts from uh, ancient Persia, or... I believe it was, you know, the Middle Eastern societies that predated Persia, that predated modern Iran, I think? There's a special name for these um, these uh, these kinds of sphinxes, but I do not for the life of me remember what it is, and uh, I forgot to put it in my notes, so oh well. Didn't occur to me that any would be ever relevant. I'm actually going to skip everything she says here, because uh, secret, uh, secret revealed. I, I tried to record this episode the other day, and tragically... <laughs> realized at the end that I had, in fact, not pressed the record button. So, um, I knew that... Actually, at this point, I'm pretty sure it's always consistent that whenever we look in any of these evidence rooms, everything we discover is recapped by Lady Love Dies. When we leave... She, she just repeats everything that we just read. Um, I don't think there's ever any information added at that step. Witness to the end. Do you want to chat, Witness? I must warn you that I am not one for long conversations. Fine by me. How are your plants, Witness? They do well in the climate of paradise. When the world is coming apart, it is good to have a hobby. Would you like one? I like to give them to people. They are difficult to care for. They are a test sent from the gods. If we fail to look after them, they will die. If they die, we all die. The plants need our time and devotion, and so do our gods. Absolutely. This plant has been freshly fertilized and watered. It comes from an esoteric plateau in my home in Iran. I, it will survive for a while without constant attention. Once you finish your investigation, it will provide something to focus on. Thank you, witness. That's kind of nice, actually. I mean, I get that it's kind of passive aggressive the way he keeps giving people plants and then badgering them to take care for them take care of them when they didn't want it to and want to in the first place. Is that a white elephant? I believe the gift giving term for that is a white elephant, something you didn't want that is a huge hassle to deal with now that you have it. I'm enjoying our conversations, Lady Love Dies. There is a sensitive matter which we should discuss further. Relic Maddening rare plant. A rare plant bred by witness. He gives them as gifts and they're notoriously hard to maintain. Do you have something you want to tell the investigator? It is about Akiko's phone call after Henry escaped. I can see you are working hard, Love Dice, so I will tell you this. I worry that you are doing this for yourself and not the gods, but I am bound to help you. It is their wish. Akiko was supposed to be at the Desolation Cell, yet I could not hear the haunting sounds of that island, nor the sea that surrounds it. 
What does that mean? Everything? Nothing? You need to work that out. The gods wish you to know, and so now you know. Well, it is yet another piece of uh, testimony that... May you fly with destroyed Eden. And may you reach the moon. Uh, that is yet another piece of testimony to put on the damn Aikiko did this pile, because at the moment it's starting to seem really heavily bi biased in that direction. There's a lot of other stuff that doesn't add up, which inclines me to believe, perhaps just because it's what I would prefer to be true, uh, all of the um, all of the stupid dumb ideas I have, such as the idea that it was, you know, everybody, a grand conspiracy of many, or indeed a sort of an accident waiting to happen, where several different conspiracies went off at the same time and accidentally resulted in this grand tragedy. With tragedy in inverted commas, because let's remember, um, it is the assholes at the top of this society who are maintaining its existence uh, through the medium of kidnapping and mass murder who have, uh, who have been slaughtered. In fact, now that I think about it, there's a fundamental hypocrisy to all of this stuff, which is that they're so, they're so upset that these people have been mass murdered when they've literally just done a mass murder of their own with no complaints whatsoever. Anyway, a lot to think about there, um, especially since Aikiko won't give us her phone records so we can't like verify her location and stuff, whereas quite a few other people we can do that. Which is in fact going to be our next goal. We're going to head over there to that specific ghost and uh, give him his ID card so that he can figure out who he is. Wait, what the hell? Oh, <laughs> that was weird. Uh, there was an odd moment of foreshortening. I thought that was a, a full-sized character far away, but it was in fact a small statue up close. Uh, once again, I have to learn about perspective. The idea that this one is merely small and close and that one is large and far away. I love this song so much. Which one even is this? Unlimited Love. It's way more of a bop than most of the ones in this game. Anyway, I'm getting completely distracted. Before we go and do that, I am going to use the secret knowledge that I gained accidentally during my previous attempt to record this episode uh, to go grab the final crests that we need. See, this is why this is why you come to SCA plays for your let's plays. There's no uh, there's no false uh, false competence here. If I fuck something up, I'll tell you I fucked it up. <laughs> And similarly, uh, I don't remember what I was going to say. So that's also an example of that thing that I just said. The fact that we can use the air dash to gain height is... I wonder if it's an oversight on the part of the developer, because I've used it to cross some gaps as we've been going along, that I suspect, well, I mean, we haven't crossed anything that isn't meant to be crossed, but I do feel like being able to use it as essentially the third jump, you know, a triple jump, is is perhaps unintentional. I'd have to experiment more to see if I could actually do anything uh, effective with it. You know, more effective than what I've just been doing, obviously. Somewhere... Around here is also a bit more of a terrace that has a Shinji on it that I missed previously, and also... Uh, before I forget... Oh, in fact, I think it might be that terrace right there, which means I have to go back up again. Oh well. But uh, it has something very interesting which will be very useful. And I'm going to grab it now so that I don't forget again, which is uh, a terrible habit that I have. There's something I've been meaning to talk about for a while, which is actually a recurring subject that I bring up from time to time in my Let's Plays. But I find it really interesting, the uh, internal tension in games as to whether or not you're allowed to lie. Aha, there it is. Because, oops, let's talk to Shinji first. What's up with the birds on this island? The island is waiting to die. Our reality is broken. And that makes the birds fly backwards? That's messed up. Can't say I'm a fan. A fan of what? 
this whole pocket of reality you've got going on. Thanks for your input. Always a pleasure. So, uh, yeah, basically, whenever you in the you know, whenever you're playing a character in a game, you're, you are engaging in a creative endeavor. You are collaborating with the designer of that game, or designers, usually. Uh, and with the writer or writers of that game, you are all working together to tell a story. Because the story that everyone has, even in, in, in an incredibly linear game, there will be slight differences. Key item obtained. Although this is obviously much more true of games that are not that linear. But there is a fundamental tension, which is that you're not allowed to lie. If you choose an option off of a list of dialogue options, and it does not have the word lie in little brackets next to it, what that means <laughs> is that your character is saying that with full sincerity. If you, for example, are allowed to say to a character, I will do a certain thing, and then you do not do that thing, and then you come back to that character, like, you, the player, have lied to that character, but the character you're playing kind of hasn't. As far as the game is concerned, everything you said was true. And that is kind of fascinating. Library Vault Records. This terminal shows the records of who accessed the Library Vault. The vault includes rare or forbidden books, mostly from, be from before the Great Betrayal in our prehistory or from dreadful cultures on terrifying planets. The most dangerous books in here are grimoires on demonology. The harrowing tome dressed in red is a particularly dangerous and forbidden text. According to the records, a number of people accessed the vault over the course of the island, but the name that stands out is Yuri Knight. What was he doing in the vault? He accessed it several times, but mostly about ten years ago. The Verses of Crying Grudge The god was captured by the Persian army during the Great Betrayal. The near-dead god was paraded around the country and displayed above the palace in Shushatra Zero. The tears of the god fertilized the ground and the city became a sea of lilies. The syndicate rescued Crying Grudge and burned the city to the ground. The weakened god slumbers in a holy pyramid on each island, slowly regaining his strength. Chronicle of Silent Goat, a tome detailing the first god to speak to us, Silent Goat, known as the Holy Catalyst or the First. During the Great Betrayal, he was captured outside Mahoda Ending in India and tortured in the Crystal Caves. He gifted the Syndicate his dying power, allowing us to start the island sequences. The Syndicate Library, all of history recorded, especially the parts struck from the history of the real world. Henry's possession a decade ago is worth looking into. It's not unusual for a citizen to try communing with the gods, but if someone wanted a scapegoat, there are books in here that would help. The restricted vault contains ancient texts, forbidden grimoires, and harrowing cosmic secrets. Some of those forbidden grimoires deal in demonology, performing rituals and summonings, all the good stuff for a curious mind looking to break the law. The library records show that Yuri accessed the restricted vault multiple times over the years. None of the dates Yuri accessed the restricted vault stand out, except for a cluster of visits a decade ago. Henry caused the demonic evasion a decade ago by performing an illegal ritual. Did he get that ritual from one of these tomes? Henry said that a stranger gave him books on demonology. Is that a coincidence, or was Yuri up to no good? So, the mystery of Henry's, uh... demonology, which we have been thinking about for a while now, uh, I had only previously associated with Witness and with Carmelina, because they were the two people who were directly involved based on, a, you know, the small bit of evidence that I found. So perhaps it's interest. perhaps it's relevant, you know, perhaps Yuri is uh, involved with that, or perhaps he simply found the previous research of the, uh, the other two. You know, I always thought there was going to be some kind of secret in here, some kind of, uh... Hmm. That's glitches, baby! Uh, we'll be right back. And we're back. I successfully got rid of that weird glitch, and it's, uh, time to continue. So, I've got a lot of leads at the moment, but very few of them are relevant to the main investigation. However, possibly... Uh, simply through the medium of metagaming. I absolutely believe that the other the other investigations are relevant to this one. At the very least, the investigation of uh, what's going on in the dead zone and the investigation of what really happened ten years ago are both relevant to this investigation because 
The one bit directly because of Henry Division, and the other indirectly because of Henry Division. You know, after all, if he was intentionally driven insane and intentionally had a demon put inside him by someone in order to make him into some kind of, you know, tool or weapon, then I don't think he can be held responsible for the way he was used as a weapon later on. Uh, so that is definitely very relevant. Anyway, current goal is to go and uh, get the final upgrade for Starlight so that we can finally start cracking open some of these mysterious doors and computers lying around and feast upon the succulent information hidden within. And uh, we can do that just over here. And then come and open this one, I guess, since it's right here. We'll finally find out what's behind that door. Who am I? Ezra Albertine. I found your employee card next to your fish tank. Your fish are doing fine. Ezra Albertine. I wonder if I liked who I am. People often wonder that at the end. The only people that don't are psychopaths. Thank you. I found something. It's in my locker. My locker code is 0120. Now I can ascend. Well, that was short and sweet. Uh, I do think that it is perhaps worth pointing out that the use of psychopath, for example, as uh, shorthand for, uh, you know, like, kind of inherently inescapably evil person who hurts people just for fun and does terrible things and is awful is a huge problem. It is extremely ableist in a mental health uh, sense. And that, that's really all I've got to say about that. It's just not a cool thing to do. Um, anyway, that's... Yeah, that's all I've got to say about that. So. Way of Blood Bar. 25th Island Sequence. Our currency doesn't work. It works as much as anything does. Why is there a limit if it's just blood? If people don't have limits, they start going crazy. The island gets out of balance. I want to see that. No, you don't. Well, I mean, first off, a limited currency makes a lot of sense, generally speaking. Mikami's Masterpiece Number 4 A whiskey made by a master. Responsible for a number of classics, the number four is an undisputed masterpiece. Sounds tasty. Also sounds expensive. Um, this is These are the, uh, the lockers of a, a miserable horrible place that destroys your mind as you work here. This is... We've had multiple people, multiple ghosts, I think, <laughs> or multiple records complain about, you know, the citizens who work at the Reality Folding Drive slowly losing their minds as time fractures around them. It's, it's horrible drudge labour that they force people to do. Not exactly the kind of worker who you would expect to be able to uh, afford extremely expensive fancy whiskey. Island Sequence 11. The God Hunters have yet to make their move. We continue to resurrect our gods timidly. This was wholly unbefitting. Uh, but yeah, so the thing about currency is kind of weird because, frankly, uh, yeah, I don't need to read that. What kind of life was a power plant worker living where they would find this? Yeah, well, that's pretty much what I was saying a second ago. Also, I need to actually install these. Which is a fun detail, I suppose. We talked about the friction and the nature of friction in games a while back. So I think those are all of the upgrades, which means we should now be able to unlock any lock on the island, which is good. Did I activate this previously? I, in fact, did activate this previously. So now that we're armed with uh, knowledge, power and... Uh, just a really snazzy outfit, it's time for us to go do other stuff. But yeah, so the thing about currency is kind of weird to me. It it makes sense for a currency to be limited because, well, it's something you see a lot in science fiction, at least, this idea of make, of, a, of a, a society that runs on a currency which is in some way limited so that you can't, you know, really have inflation go wild or anything like that, I guess, so that states can control it much more easily as well. Um, and the way they've done that in this setting is the idea that uh, the currency they use are blood crystals, which are rendered from the blood of one of the members of the Syndicate. One specific member who is now dead. 
which means that by definition uh, their currency is limited. Like, so am I to conclude that that uh, syndicate member on, on the next island just doesn't know that the guy whose blood was used is dead? Is it a secret? Did the uh, did the syndicate perhaps kill him in order to make like maintain control of the currency? These questions and many more will likely never be answered. Island sequence 009. The oceans boil as an army of demons descend on us. Natasha Silence dies in the defense of the Golden Church. Well, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Have you guys considered just not being a uh, extremely horrible uh, murder cult? I was going to call it a death cult, but it's not really because the syndicate are immortal. You know, is it a death cult if you're being sacrificed by someone else? I suppose, potentially. We're going to zip through this real quick because these are not sp not particularly fun to solve and uh, not particularly fun to talk about. So, let's finally find out what's in this weird back shed. Presumably it's storage for the facility, or apparently not. A tunnel. A secret tunnel. Or maybe it's a public tunnel. Anyway, it looks like there's a lot of memorials here to Crimson Acid, which is weird considering she's definitely still alive. Also, these photos. I suppose within the context of the game, they are supposed to be the photos of... Uh, members of this society? Perhaps this is an easter egg though, because I'm pr I am know that this is a photo of one of the developers, therefore presumably these are all photos of the people who worked on the game. Um, I know there were two, two developers who worked on it and at least one artist, I think, who's not really listed as like the people who work for Kaizen Gameworks who make the game, but just made the art, I suppose. Uh, we've, or perhaps these are more more memorials to our beloved leader, Montserrat Breaker, who is super dead. And now that I think about it, we we saw a memorial to him previously, which raises the question of who put it there, because there's only like five people left on the entire island. There were only five people left on the island when he was killed, supposedly. Who had the time to go around making a whole bunch of memorials, you know? These kinds of memorials are usually uh, or at least the design of these memorials is representative of street memorials, which are usually organically happen, like organic occurrences, um, where various different individuals contribute to a whole that forms naturally over time. Like by definition, on this island, th these must have been made by one or a f or just a tiny number of people. So, so that's weird. What makes a good killer? You mean someone that's good at killing or someone that doesn't get caught? The first one. Coldness. Passion leads to mistakes. If someone survives being killed, you've messed up. If you can kill like it's the most routine thing in the world, you make a good killer. What about what about not getting caught? You either need to disappear or to make it seem too ridiculous that you could have been involved. You think there's someone like that on the island? If there wasn't, I wouldn't be here. Good point! So I guess the implication there is that uh, whoever it was who did the killing must be like the, the last person you'd expect, which is one of the reasons why I'm not inclined to think it was Aikiko, even though all of the evidence points towards Aikiko. Despairing diary. A diary from a worker in the power station. They're complaining about abnormal time distortions from being near the reality folding drive. Lost time, days that go on for months, and unexpected age regression are all common side effects. Oh. Oh, okay. Maybe these are supposed to be memorials for the citizens who've died working in the, uh... I guess in the, uh, the reality folding drive. Maybe these are memorials for everyone who's been, been slaughtered in the name of the continuation of this society prior to the slaughter ritual that continues the society. Time for another little, uh, blood piss. Cosmic Deceit Carving. The many-armed iguana, buried under the shifting sands of the bizarre purple desert hidden in Egypt. A nasty and selfish god, he died after his plan to seduce Romeo Silence was foiled by the syndicate. 
Cool. Interesting. I wonder how many of those there are left to find. There's probably one for each god, right? Relic obtained. Island sequence 12. Centuries of visions. Every clock remained at zero, 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 and we all saw great stone citadels on a forgotten planet. Yeah. So, I suppose this is citizens making memorials for other citizens who have been, who have been lost in the line of duty. Which is tragic, really. Anyway, we'll zoom through this one as well and find out where we appear on the other side. Nightmare computer. Nightmare computer unlocked. Well, here we go. Uh, hmm, actually, looking at my clock, uh, we're about at time. So I'm afraid I'm going to have to leave you on this terrible cliffhanger. So that's going to be it from me for today. If you want to find out what's on the other side of this fascinatingly cliffhangery door, well, I'm afraid you'll just have to join me again next time. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe, and share. I also stream on Twitch, and I now have a Discord server for stream scheduling. You can contribute to my existence on Ko-fi or Patreon, and all of those links are in the video description. Thanks so much for watching.